Hey there, I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Hard to Master, which is a part of Love to Hate. And in this video, we are going to be comparing a couple of games that you might be familiar with. We've got Dinosaur Island. And Dinosaur World. Both from Pandasaurus Games. And uh, so Dinosaur Island uh, came out, how long ago was it? Oh, uh, 20, maybe 2018, I think. Okay. Somewhere around there. 2017, so 2018. It's been around maybe four or five years and it has uh, been a very popular game. Mm -hmm. It's been one that's been on the top of the BGG charts for quite some time, pretty much ever since it came out. I mean, when I think dinosaur board games, that's kind of the one that my mind goes to as the granddaddy the big one. I think it's been the top for a while. There's yeah. been a lot of dinosaur board games come out uh, recently. He yes. has a few of them. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about these. that. Um, so yeah, there's yeah. been a lot of dinosaur games, but I think the number one that most people talk about, other than Dinogenics came out too. It was compared yeah. to this heavily um, as a Jurassic Park uh, board game. And so this one I think has been the top uh, yeah. talked about or, or experienced for a while. In addition to when they did Duosaur, right, uh, two-player version of this, and now you have another one that you can show in a little bit. But yeah, uh, we actually do have it. We're gonna we're gonna show you guys this real quick. This is the Dinosaur Roar and Write, the Roll and Write version of Dinosaur Island. We're not gonna talk about this too much. I do want to kind of show it off and let you guys know that it does exist. Get it out of my face a little bit. Um, and uh, we're not gonna cover this too much in this video. Uh, as it's quite different as a roll and write mm -hmm. game than the bigger, heavier games that you see here in front of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to review it in another video, so be on the lookout for that. But uh, yeah, so now we have Dinosaur World. And uh, this just came out from Pandasaurus Games. Uh, I, sh I say just came out 2021. We're in 2022 now. Um, but it's still really new and uh, is a very similar to Dinosaur Island, similar in theme, similar in some of the same uh, phases that you go through in the game, similar mechanics, but, and this is probably the reason why you're watching this video in the first place, you wanna know what's different. What is different about these two games? Why do we even need these two games mm -hmm. in the board gaming world? And so we're gonna talk about that in this video. So, um, <clears throat> we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about Dinosaur Island and the way it plays because it's been out for quite mm -hmm. some time. And if you don't know Dinosaur Island, there are plenty of videos out there that you can go and watch and get familiar with how that game operates. We're gonna kind of assume that most of you out there already know the big idea behind that game. We're gonna spend more so time talking mm -hmm. about Dinosaur World. So, uh, Jeremy, let's jump into this and we're gonna take an overhead view so you all can see some of the stuff that we have here on the table. So yeah, first off, let me just say box cover since we have them both oh, yeah. here. <laughs> um, I do like this art style of Dinosaur World, but I love the box of this one. Yeah, I mean, it screams Jurassic Park. Yeah, it does. It screams Jurassic World. Two totally different movies, both great movies, but uh, you cannot beat Jurassic Park. Yeah. That is, that's a movie, if it's on TV, I have to stop and watch just because right. uh, I remember watching it in theaters. I've seen it in theaters when they do the um, throwback movies. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I love the uh, movies, so both of these games, gradually I'm going to gravitate towards them and want well, to, to play them. So, and for a couple of kids who grow, grew up in the 90s, I mean, you, you know, we're, we're just going to go I mean, yeah, Jurassic I mean, Park. It's, <laughs> hold on to your butts, everybody. <laughs> um, so with, with these games, we wanted to talk about some of the comparisons with components. And uh, when Lance and I were talking, I told him, I feel like I'm going to gravitate towards telling people to get Dinosaur Rural. And there's some reasons behind that. Um, I think that it's, A, going to be easier to find maybe not right away because it just came out but once you get it there's so much more in that box that you wouldn't have to upgrade or yeah. go find other components to make it what you want it to be 
I feel like if you're someone that has had Dinosaur Island on your shelf, you've spent a lot of time with, <coughs> sorry, with it, and you've um, maybe gotten the expansion, or you've gotten upgraded things, which we're gonna show you, that you've invested a lot of money in this game, probably, and a lot of time in it, and really enjoy it. And then this comes out, and it's got a lot of things that you wish would have been included in the Kickstarter, or, or were requested, that were never done, but were done in this one. And I mean, it's an applause in its own, but it kind of tells you which one you might gravitate towards now. Yeah. So as we're looking overhead, let's point out a couple things. I mean, a lot of the components are still similar or similar style. Art style is gonna be different. I believe that for many people, this graphic design and components will gravitate more towards you yeah um versus the old 90 nostalgia hot pink lime green right sherbet orange i mean <laughs> i enjoy those colors i love nickelodeon as a kid and all that that print but a lot of people wanted to vomit when they saw that so this is a little bit more appeasing for those people not to say those of you that were like me that grew up and loved the 80s 90s didn't like that other style and like i said both of these will be on my shelf just because I've invested so much time and in, in things into the original. But if you look at the original boards... Yeah, we'll take a look at that real quick. Um, those were spread out by phases a little bit different than in this one. So this one, you had a phase one board, phase two. Uh, the, the, so this is basically where you're going to place your scientist. The next one is where you're going to do your market phase, which is a quite a bit different in this game. Then you have your own board phase where you're tracking uh, deoxyribonucleic acids, which is DNA for those of you, uh, as well as worker placement on your board, and then your security and threat, which we're gonna show you the Dinosaur World board because it's very similar. You don't see your uh, worker placement spots here because they're on a separate board, which is your park board. Um, but you see the DNA works very similar. The only difference is you don't have your initial blocking cubes you're free to just you know gain what you can here uh, you have your your threat and then your security and then this is for your jeeple your jeeple track which obviously is not in this one here you'll see specialist cards which you don't use unless you're doing solo i believe in dinosaur world <coughs> from what i gained from the rule book so and then you have your phase four board which is essentially uh what you're doing here it's just totally different so with your phase four board in dinosaur island you will have tiles which we didn't pull all of them out because there's a whole lot for both of these games are both known to be table hogs uh it's a toss-up for which is going to be more i've heard dinosaur world is uh, we haven't played it four player yet to te attest to yeah. that but uh they're both huge but these tiles go on here this board reminds me of what you would have in a Uwe Rosenberg Agricola or um, Caverna. And so I don't have those games anymore on my shelf. This fills that niche for me of, of completing the board. You'll see you start with two uh, that are printed on your um, board to start. So you don't have to worry about adding anything. Here, all you start with in your tiles, and we'll move over to Dinosaur World. And I just realized we've got this upside down, so let's see if we can't swing this around for you guys. So it's oh, I thought you knew that when you put it out. Right orientation. I thought you were testing people to <laughs> see if they were able to read upside down. So you can see here that these are all hexes that you are going to be uh, laying. This is uh, a, a bigger part of the game is this tile laying. <laughs> Uh, city building, park building uh, aspect in this one. <clears throat> yeah, and, and like we said over here, this is where your workers go. So it's a similar feel to the board that you have. I know Lance felt in this one for him that worker placement wasn't as prevalent. Yeah. I And we'll talk about that in a minute once we get past these quick component things. Um, and we'll throw out a new term I think is more prevalent to this style game versus the actual worker placement of Dinosaur Island. But these tiles essentially are, are hexes, do the same function of the tiles that you would place on Dinosaur Island board. The difference is, is paddocks are already built there, so you don't have to worry about the market phase where you're trying to get that. You're just trying to buy the tile and then create the dinosaurs later, which streamlines those tiles a little bit. 
streamlines the market because all you're really doing is buying tiles, uh, these certain uh, restaurant merchandise, roller coaster, and security are on an attractions board that you don't have to send a worker. You just pay for them. Uh, the dinosaurs. That's going to be your attractions board right there. Yeah. Standard so you just tiles pay that money. you can you just don't buy have to at send any anybody. Time. Yeah. The other dinosaur, when you're getting dinosaur paddocks, you're just paying for that, but you have to send either a couple workers or Mr. Moneybags to make it a little bit cheaper <laughs> for you, uh, the administrator. And real quick, these are the other two boards that, that are the one. market. And you've got your, uh, uh, here on this side of the board, these are gonna be your special buildings that you are, uh, or no, excuse me, these are your dinosaur paddocks. The dinosaur paddocks, and yeah. then over here is where you can do your gathering. DNA. Uh, DNA and researching. And this board over here on my on my right is going to be the special buildings mm -hmm. that are going to be the ones that give you the special abilities, which I think is draws a similarity to the specialists that you could gain throughout mm -hmm. the course of, of Dinosaur that, Island. The abilities are, are yeah. kind of like that. But I will say, and when we get to the meeples and stuff, uh, we can go ahead and hop in that since we've talked about the boards. The meeples are essentially the same type of meeples that you would get, the plastic same quality uh, meeples that you have in Dinosaur Island versus Dinosaur World, and there are more of them. Um, the difference is, is these are just visitors and, mm -hmm. ho and hooligans that you kick out of your park, whereas these are actually workers that you're going to place. Um, and what they did with these is, in the Dinosaur Island expansion, Totally Liquid, you have specialists that you can have, and those specialists can give you uh, a little bonus when they do certain things or go certain places. Well, that's essentially what they've included in here. So, when, like I said, when I tell you that the new one is the one I would promote for you to probably get if you haven't already gotten Dinosaur Island or this that style of doing a tiling uh, Uwe Rosenberg type board versus hexes. If those if those couple things don't reach to you, this is the one I would tell you to gravitate yeah. towards because it just they've taken some of the things that have worked well, they've included it in the base game, um, and they've given you a little bit upgraded artwork and components and a newer style that reaches towards today's, you know, board gaming versus what was four or five years ago. Right. So these give you special abilities. This guy will help your security, make it uh, less expensive. You can do it at the security building or over here on your board. This yep. guy gives you more money or makes uh, buying dinosaur paddocks cheaper. Uh, the scientists allow you to gain additional um, basic DNA whenever you research or if you're um, refining. And so, and then the purple dudes, they will allow you to upgrade your Jeeple garage at a cheaper rate, but you also have uh, other purple tiles like the social media right. and the Ida tile that allowed me to, to basically however far my Jeeple uh, bonuses are, I'm gonna get points for that and that tile help quite a bit. Um, it did. That's an OP tile. <laughs> those, you just have to, you could have bought it. Um, but that's the difference with the meeples. They're very similar. Yeah. Money, uh, these are Kickstarter coins, which is a number one for me. Uh, probably one of the main reasons why I went ahead and did it because even having Dinosaur Island was, these are a big deal for me because my my biggest complaint, and it goes with the, the graphic design of the coins, I think that could have been a little bit more appeasing. I do not like these these coins. They're atrocious to me. Um, I know many of you don't care and that's fine, but I don't think these match the art style. I don't think they do the other graphic design justice. And there's one other component that I'll talk about in a minute that I also think does that. These coins, you're gonna probably have to find them or find a Kickstarter copy, but they're much worth it um, compared to what you get in Dinosaur Island. I think these look better than these, but everybody complained about these back in the day. <laughs> and so I think this is even a step down, but the coins are nice. I like that they're shaped different. Yeah. The original Dinosaur Island coins, I mean, these are heavy coins. They did an upgrade or a change to them to make them less intense, but these are a, still a good feel, not as chunky and heavy, but right. I do like the design. I they're like different the design. Shape. They're easier to, to differentiate for maybe and I don't know, but color blindness maybe, but you can still see everything. So it's not a, probably not a big deal with the original coins either. 
but I do like the new coins. I like the feel, I like the shape of them. Um, one last, or the other component I do not like in this game, uh, and they do their purpose. They fit on the tile just like they should, but they just, they're not great to look at and not everything has to be, but just something that when you're punching them out, it takes a long time. You don't want to lose them, which you think you're going to do. They mm -hmm. don't really, I mean, they're, they're just, you know, and give or take, but to their credit, these are do boredom to. tokens. And so it is, tracking. it matches, it matches, <laughs> it, it matches it, but it's just not a pretty thing to mm -hmm. look at, especially when you look at everything else and everything else, like you said, it just doesn't do the graphic design very it, good. It very makes sense. I, I like them better than the coins though. Yeah. They do their purpose better. I think than these, I think they could have done a better icon, but it, yeah. it is what it is. You know what it is. It's just if you don't, if you get these coins, that's all you have. I don't think you're going to be satisfied with them when you see the other coins, yeah. and and you may be. That's fine, but for me, I I I put these in a different box, and I had to find them to do this video. <laughs> so, the last thing we should probably go over as far as components would be the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs, so, yeah. Uh, these are the Kickstarter ones, so you can. The good thing is, is you can get the upgraded. Uh, Kickstarter box that has the different dinosaurs, or you can get, I believe the T-Rex is the standard red carnivorous dinosaur that you would get. Um, and probably a Stegosaurus for the um, the herbivores, and then yeah. a Raptor probably for the purple. I don't remember exactly, but with the Kickstarter add-on, which you can buy separately, it does give you differentiated dinosaurs so it matches what you're putting on the board um, the rule book has an excellent diagram so if you're looking to find uh, the dinosaurs it's right there to find exactly which one that, that is you're nice. trying to get it also has the expansions which is amazing i love that they have the expansion rule books in here so you could either pass the little pamphlet out to other people that want to see it or again it's all going to be in one spot the one thing i wish they did in the rule book though was i wish they included a little bit more of a you know this is what you need exactly for some of, of these i mean most of them make yeah. sense but just to in, in case there were any clarification questions it had maybe a section that explained it just a hair. Right. It, it just says, put the objectives out, one of each type. Um, objective cards are different in Dinosaur Island. Yeah. We talked about that as well, based on if you're playing a long, short, or medium game, I like having the option. Uh, I played the short game once, I would never play the short game of Dinosaur Island again. Medium or long is the way I would play it. Much, uh, but you have more options, of game. a lot of different objectives. The main big difference here with the cards is being able to throw in plot twists and change the yeah. game up. That's the replayability with this aspect and you get more of them with the expansion or you have the modules. I mean, yeah. changing the game of Dinosaur Island up is very easy with all, I mean, this is a big deck. All you get are this, these, these objective cards. Right. You do have the expansion, can throw in different dinosaurs which we have not utilized yet. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot to add. It's just different dinosaurs, a few different tiles, yeah. and a different die that can change some bonus type stuff. Whereas with the expansion of Dinosaur Island, which they have included aspects of it into the core game here, but I just feel like there's quite a bit more replayability replay and that. different things you can add in Dinosaur Island. Yeah, um, We didn't show the dinosaurs for uh, Dinosaur Island. So when you get the box, it's gonna be like this, the standard game that's not Kickstarter. They're all, I think, Stegosauruses. So you get a bunch of those. Kickstarter has different ones that I don't use because over time, Meeple Source has given options to spend a whole bunch of money to buy <laughs> uh, basically the same thing, but wooden versions for every single dinosaur and the expansion and, and those the are standard sweet. game. They're sweet. Yeah. But like I said, I'm too invested. I have the... <laughs> A uh, custom play mat for all the boards to be on one, which is really nice as well. Yeah. A neoprene. Uh, so I won't ever get rid of Dinosaur Island because there's so much you can do with it and have. But again, I would steer people to the newer one. And I think that there's a place for both if you 
love Dinosaur Island and you want the other game, uh, do you want to hit on uh, this? Yeah, yeah. Talk let's, about let's talk about some of the gameplay uh, yeah. that you see with Dinosaur <laughs> World. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that I feel like Dinosaur World, the, <laughs> the idea with that game is much more centered around this tile laying, mm -hmm. park building aspect of the game. Um, Jeremy, you said that Dinosaur Island is all about making dinosaurs, whereas Dinosaur World is all about running a dinosaur park. Well, I think it's, I feel like, I feel like, and this is going to sound strange because you're essentially doing similar things. I feel like Dinosaur Island is like Jurassic Park. You're building that Jurassic yeah. Park. People haven't come to the park yet, even though you have hooligans and visitors. <laughs> it's like the first year or few months that Dinosaur Island is open, mm -hmm. but you're still got to build you know several yeah. things first and get it going i feel like this is managing the park and yeah. sending tours around you're not really sending tours you're having people come and go to exhibits yeah and see dinosaurs and stuff whereas this one you're sending people out and, this and is... that one you can utilize everybody this one it's only based on where your tour goes so you're not going to use every single hex there's right. no way so let's, let's talk about that real quick, because I think if you don't know anything about Dinosaur World, that probably <clears throat> makes no sense to you what we're talking about there. So at the end of every round, you're going to do what's called a Jeepal tour. Mm -hmm. And that's because every player has their own little Jeep meeple or Jeepal. And that is going to start what is at the beginning of the game, your uh, welcome center. And that's gonna be somewhere on this side of the board. So you're saying, well, why did you have it all, all the way over here? Well, that's because after the third round, it's actually going to flip over mm -hmm. to become your park entrance and you're gonna move it somewhere else in your park. And I just happen to have mine over here on the opposite end. And it forces <clears throat> you to have to kind of plan your park out to not only be centered around where you started, so this end of the board, but you're also trying to figure out, well, I need to come up with a plan to best utilize my tiles towards the other half of my park because I'm gonna have to move my, my starting tile to that side towards the end of the game. And what you do on this Jeepal tour is, uh, depending upon how far you've progressed on your Jeepal board, where'd we move that? Here it is. Uh, depending on Palin, how far you've progressed on this track right here, you're going to gain a number of movements. You start the game with two, mm -hmm. and so you're going to be able to move two spaces from your, your starting tiles. So I might go here and I might go there. That might be my two moves, getting to do the actions that are on those tiles, gaining excitement on those tiles, mm -hmm. and, and that's how you get excitement in the new version, the mm -hmm. new dinosaur world. You don't get it any longer for just <clears throat> having made dinosaurs. It's all about uh, getting your people, your, your people to those places. And that's the managing the park aspect. So as you move well, tell up, them, because if you don't send, if you don't activate that tile with your arrows, you don't get you the don't excitement. get anything. Yeah, and you can have negative excitement because of the boredom. And so if you don't activate one that's going to give you excitement in the beginning, yep, you're not going to be able to have excitement to run your your. And I will show park. you guys real quick that can easily happen because a lot of these tiles don't give you a whole lot of excitement such as the security tile those the, your, your tourists aren't going to care about the security and so after you travel to each of these tiles they're going to get more and more bored mm -hmm. with seeing the same things over and over again and so this tile the security tile gives me zero excitement mm -hmm. and I, then i have to subtract <clears throat> this number here and this number increases every Time round visit, i yeah. visit that tile so uh, if I have no excitement, I can't come here because I don't have three excitement to spend to keep going to the security mm -hmm. tile. So that's why the, the arrangement of your tiles is mm -hmm. so vitally important in this game. This is much more all about tile placement than uh, I, I truly feel like it is as a, as a worker placement game. This is much more tile placement than it is worker placement because you've got to really put a lot of your brain power in figuring out where am I placing my tiles, where am I figuring out my path, and the <clears> order in which I'm visiting these tiles is, is important as well. Um, I will say though, 
because you can get yourself in a hole, and I did, um, based on how I placed them. Obviously, this wouldn't be here in the beginning. I guess I could have put a, a tile there later, which I didn't even think about. I just had a gap here. Yeah. But knowing yeah, where so you, you want to send up people, like this. yeah, that's kind of, and the, some of these weren't here. That's knowing where you're going to send your people and over and over and get that excitement is very important. But I think being able to move this tile over here, because I just stopped sending people to a couple of these dinosaurs because I had one here, one here, and it's like pick or choose because otherwise I'm just been doing a loop here and nothing's over here. So this moving at first, I was like, oh, this kind of sucks because now I, <laughs> I have a gap over here and I can't go to all the places I want to. I just had to change. Well, I'll put a tile here. Now I can go all these yeah. places and this actually helped me out. Let me add two tiles and I could just keep running them and get a bunch of points. So... But the park entrance changing is not the end of the world. You can you, make yeah, a change. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, another big aspect about Dinosaur World that is different are the workers that we've talked about and that they, they do different things. They provide different abilities. Um, not all the workers are created the same. And the way you get these workers changes. Um, so you're going to draft them. You're going to draft, basically. There's going to be a number of cards out here equal to the number of players plus one. Mm -hmm. And starting with the first player, you draft your cards. So you're going to see the, the set of workers that you are going to uh, more than likely get for that round. And that's going to plan out what you're planning on doing the rest of the round, whether that be the worker placement or with this tile laying jeeple tour because mm -hmm. as you're moving where'd my jeeple go as you're moving your jeeple around in order to take a lot of these actions you're having to place Drop somebody off. specific type of mm -hmm. workers if i want to raise up my security i can't just place any old regular mm -hmm. worker There's it's no got to be either it's, so it's got to be it's got to be that specific one except for these certain tiles yeah the basic don't. tiles can take any any kind of worker but mm -hmm. you're more advanced uh, higher benefit tiles are going to be specific, uh, such as the social media one. It's going to ask for two purples mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So uh, your 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 drafting of workers is different, and it's and it does pertain to the worker placement. But man, does so much of the games revolve around this uh, park building tile placement, uh, route building even aspect of the game. Well, well, real quick, you're always going to have nine that you choose. And mm -hmm. just to go over the progression as far as phases, the first phase is to hire workers. The second one, you're going to do actions on the boards we've already showed you, whether it's buying attractions, sending people to, to research, gather DNA, or get paddocks, or special buildings. Don't You can't use all your people there because, like we said, you're going to need to use yeah. these workers for your private actions on this board, which this is your private board, which you can do private actions on, and to drop them off at different locations when you're doing your Jeeple tour. And um, I told Lance right away, when I initially saw this on Kickstarter and having Dinosaur Island being intrigued because yes, it's a, a newer, different version of the game, it reminded me, this aspect reminded me of Paladins this is a, yeah. I believe, a worker management type game. I yeah. don't know, know if that's a major, we have resource management. I feel like this is worker management. I like and that. If that's even a term or not, maybe I'm coining it here. Who knows? <laughs> uh, put in the comments if, if you've heard that or coined it or whatever. I don't care. I'll give you props <laughs> if you did. But this is more of a worker management. Yeah. Yes, you're placing workers, but just like in Paladins, finding... And in round five, it's probably going to happen. Everything goes pretty, can go pretty smoothly. And then you have that turn where you've oh, got to yeah. make every single worker yeah. work to work out, to maximize that last turn. And that, yeah. that's happened. I mean, I'm okay with, you know, a turn doing that. If, if one turn and you make it count, I'm fine with it as long as it's not happening the whole game. In Paladins, that's what I, I've had to do is I got, I'm got i starting moving around the board, doing a little Queen's Gambit, watching what everybody else <laughs> might do, you know, getting it ready. <coughs> and then it takes a second. And then we go, and that, that round's over, and it, it just ended quicker than it did setting it up. That can happen in this game, especially towards the end of the game, yeah. because you're managing these nine people, you're placing them on the board, but it's nine workers at the beginning of every round. That's 
That's a lot of workers to place. It's not like Lost Ruins of Arnok where you're dropping two people or even in Dinosaur Island where you have, you know, three, maybe yeah. max four, yeah. five, but you get nine at the beginning and managing those like you would resources because you have money, managing well, DNA. And it's also because <clears throat> these workers are, are meant to uh, carry out through so many phases of the game, whereas in Dinosaur Island, it was really just use them here or you can you can carry over a couple to do something else well, later Well, Dinosaur on. Island, you use your scientists to get an extra worker right. for later. So yeah. you're using your scientists to get DNA, yeah. maybe get an extra worker, get a get a dinosaur recipe. Mm -hmm. yeah, you make them in a lab, dinosaur <laughs> recipe. Then you know what to use for later. Here, you have the same uh, component, the same workers, yeah. and you've got to manage them throughout the whole, uh, every, every four phase. phase. Yeah until the end, whenever you get to the income phase. We haven't and, and talked so, about that much, but it's well, pretty simple. Real quick, what I do want to say on that note is, is that I do feel like Dinosaur World, there is a whole lot more agency. There's a lot more choices to make on your turn <clears throat> as you're going through each of these phases. And as you increase the number of choices that you're going to be making, the AP is more than likely going to go up. And, and Dinosaur World or Island, uh, it, it's not a short game by any means. I mean, you can play the short game, but as we've said, don't do that. Medi play the medium, medium and the long. Medium good, long if you really want and, a heavy game. Mode. And it is a longer <clears throat> game. Um, Dinosaur World, I feel like, is probably going to be longer for a lot of people, uh, especially in the beginning as you, as you come learn to it. learn it. But um, even though the box says it, it ought to be a quicker game than Dinosaur Island, I don't know that I agree with that because of just how many choices there are that you are making on your turn and through all of these different <clears throat> phases. I feel like different phases in, in the different games are uh, sim more simplistic. So like in, in Dinosaur Island, you have phase one where you're placing workers and everything. That's more complex than phase one in here. Phase one, you're just picking yeah. a card and taking those workers. Sure. Phase two, you're using it, you're buying stuff on the board. I feel like both of those are, are fairly simple because usually you don't have a whole lot of money mm -hmm. or you have to spend extra money to get stuff in Dinosaur Island phase two. So a lot of times you may not do a whole lot in that one. This one, I feel like you spend more time with it. It's still fairly easy because they simplified the, the paddock. Sure, yeah. They simplified a bunch of the tiles and what you're doing in phase two. The market two, is not as but big. But it's, it's a it's, longer it's time smaller. because you're spending more money. You have more money, I think, and you spend it more in that phase, so yeah. it's longer. I think private actions in this one are pretty quick because you've used most of your workers either in phase one or sure. uh, two or you're gonna send them on the Jeeple tour. So, and in the beginning of the game, you're gonna spend more of them here. As you do the Jeeple tour late in rounds three, four, and five, you're then gonna, you're gonna use here. more of them here. But yeah. in the beginning, this can be a little bit longer, but it changes. Yeah. In Dinosaur Island, phase three's uh, not too long. Um, it feels about the same time as this one yeah. because you don't have a whole lot of workers. But it's still a different feel, and it, it's I think it's comparable there. But then phase four with the Jeeple, that takes a little bit longer in this one than phase four of... And there I think phase four is about even on both. So it really comes down to the first two phases of, of each game, and they kind of flip-flop in how fast everything goes. I just, and that's the time difference, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think... For Both of Phase 4 can take a long time. Whether you're pulling people in, in order, sure, getting yeah. paid, and moving up excitement and points, same here. You're, you're going through each tile, placing a worker, calculating, you know, how many points, how much DNA you have to do, how, you know, all yeah. this and that. And I think those are even, and they're a different type of complexity and different type of actions you're doing but they take the same amount of time. So really, it comes down to the first two rounds and how smooth are those going in each game. Mm -hmm. And they end up being pretty close in how much time they are. It, and as you play more, it's gonna change, but I think it comes down to those first two rounds. It's probably not a huge difference mm -hmm. between the two, but I do feel like that there's more AP and with that, maybe a little more downtime in Dinosaur World than there would be in Dinosaur I think, Island. 
I think there is in this unless, and the, the thing that changes it, and this is my favorite module for from the expansion, is if you're playing the blueprints yeah. for Dinosaur Island, I love that mode. It gives you a guideline. You have to choose, well, do I do it in this order and get more points, or do I just put this tile down and, and don't care about that just so I can get it and get something else there. Yeah. And that's gonna be the same kind of complexity or, or time constraint and adding more time into that game like you would here. Do I put the tile here or do I have to move it over here so that whenever I'm moving this new route because my park entrance just moved, I can go through all of yeah. these. And I think that's the similarity and what they kind of added kind of to this, even though there's not that rough yeah. go in this order and you get 20 points. Well, uh, that's my challenge. I want to go in that order and build it that way <laughs> and try to get the extra 20 points for in game. Best module, I think, in, in Dinosaur Island is a blueprint. And I feel like yeah. some of that is implemented here, Carried even though you don't see it. Yeah. You don't see a chart that shows you that. <clears throat> but how you activate the tiles is because of where you place them. Because if you don't do blueprints, you can just put your tiles anywhere over there. Yeah. And it's not a big deal. Whereas with Blueprint, you try to put them in a certain way to get more points. Same way you would try to put these in a new way yeah. to round the, the circular path of five, maximum five arrows, five hexes, to, to utilize those the best. So guys, uh, what I think we're kind of saying in summarization of what uh, <coughs> is going on here with Dinosaur World is that... Uh, I feel like there's a little bit more freedom of design in the park building aspect of this game. Um, you, you mentioned there's a lot of replayability with Dinosaur Island uh, I think with there the different is expansions. Here too, I think there is here with because the tiles. with the tiles and, and the way you get them, but the I order you get them, and the arrangement of those tiles. When I say replayability, I'm not just saying replaying the game. I'm saying making it feel quite a bit different. Sure, I can yeah. throw in. Uh, public relation cards. I can yeah. throw in, uh, I can play that with five players and who knows if that becomes an expansion for this. I don't know if I'd want to play it with five players, but if I want to play a long or a medium uh, version of Dinosaur Island that's going to be more involved with five players, I can. Mm -hmm. um, there's different specialists. There's, I mean, there's just so many modules, water dinos. Yeah. And I can add those dinos from these yeah. expansions. I'm just saying I feel like the modularness and making the dinosaur island mm -hmm. what I want it to be for that session, whether I throw in one uh, module or I throw in several modules, I feel like the replayability of that is more because you still have a whole heck of a ton of plot twists. These yeah. are drastically changing the game. Yeah. The objectives you're gonna see, I mean, yeah, if you split them up into the three different categories, they equal probably the same as those. But, I mean, I just think that those type of things make that game have more replayability as far as differentiating the game. This is gonna differentiate just because of different dinosaurs that come out mm -hmm. or different tiles that you see. But the overall game's gonna be the same. There's no plot twist or anything, and I'm not saying they needed to throw that in there. I've already told Just you both of these would be on my game. shelf. But if I wanna really switch it up for replayability sense, I'm gonna go sure. with that. If yeah. I wanna play, and I want everybody to play the same game, and they know how, and we're getting faster playing because we keep, we know how it's done, we've seen the tiles, we know those, and I want something that's more hex placement with, with uh, worker management, meeple management yeah um and then a little bit of worker placement and things like that and route building that's one thing and if i want something that's more let me worker place have a strong market sense that's more cutthroat yeah in addition to yeah having a board that i'm building like an uve rosenberg and i keep saying his name because he's known to have some very good tile placement on your board to fill these spots like caverna agricola mm -hmm. that's the get or even uh feast for odin yeah things like that where you're filling those up to do things that's the one to go to if you want just a city building which is a park building type hex building with with a streamlined paddock system then i would go for this like i said both will be on the shelf they come they will come out at different 
instances, but again, I spent a lot of time and money and enjoyment with Dinosaur Island with the 90s feel. I can't just yeah. I can't just give it away and say, I'm gonna keep this because it all fits in one box. It has majority of it already upgraded yeah. and that's there. Yes, that's why I will keep this one. But I still really enjoy the original. Have everything to, I mean, they're not, those are, these are awesome too. I love these. But these are a big upgrade too. And I mean, there's yeah. every single one and I can't just not play the original. And so if you're someone that has the original and you're gonna keep it and you want something else, great. If you have, if you have so, this one and you wanna get rid of it because everything's upgraded, a new game style with worker management instead of worker placement, hex you know, route building with still upgraded pieces and everything fits in one box instead of having to have two boxes, definitely go ahead and sell that one or get, <laughs> give it to somebody and get the new one. I'm not saying not to. I'm saying there's, there's a room for both on my shelf. They're both very different. They play about the same amount of time. The complexity is very similar. I would say this one may be a hair more complex mm -hmm. by maybe 0 0.15, 0 0.25. But there's still so much replayability and modularness, modu mm -hmm. modular capabilities in the other one that I can't say. It's not just upgraded components. There's just so much goodness to that original so that I can't say get rid of it. Basically, what we're saying to you, you guys is... You can't make a wrong choice. That you really. can't make a wrong choice. And Dinosaur World is not Dinosaur Island killer. No. Uh, it's not going to kill it and replace it for you, more than likely. Unless you're somebody who is just really all about that park building, city building, expansion type a game experience that you just didn't really have in Dinosaur Island. If that this is has a you, suburbia feel. Yes, it does. This, this has a suburbia, suburbia um, Texas, everything. Meeple Land, Dice Hospital kind of mm, almost yeah. feel to it. Um, if that's your cup of tea, then maybe Dinosaur World is your game that you really ought to go for. And if you really enjoyed the idea behind Dinosaur Island and the theme, but maybe there was just a few things that you got hung up on, then maybe the Dinosaur... art style for some of the you. The art style, perhaps, yeah. Uh, the pulling out of the bag with the, with the uh, hooligans and the, mm -hmm. and the visitors, the, the, the randomness of that, if that was something that you got hung up on you're not gonna have that in this game you do still roll dice and so there is still a little bit of a luck factor which as usual your that luck factor killed me. is horrible um but if that's something you're hung up on you're not gonna have as much of luck being an issue in dinosaur world uh so that might be something that appeals to you when it comes to this game i feel like as i've already said i feel like this is much more of a brain burner to me than Dinosaur Island and Dinosaur Island is still is still a, a, a heavier game in my opinion um, But man is this one one that I feel like I've got to really think about a lot of my choices And I got to think about not only what am I what am I doing in phase one? But I got to think about what am I doing in phase one as it applies to phase four? Because I can't pick these workers without having already thought about what I'm doing on my Jeeple tour And that's what I mean about this feeling like a heavier game to me so well, well, real quick again if i'm pointing someone to buy one i would point people to buy dinosaur world mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's that's the last thing i'm saying is uh, as far as that is i'm not saying go buy dinosaur island i'm saying if you've had dinosaur if you island have dinosaur island. upgraded <laughs> keep it keep <laughs> yeah. it there's a there's room on the shelf make room for the shelf especially if you love jurassic park i'm saying based on the upgrades yeah. You can get all the expansions and that probably for one. around a hundred or so bucks. It all you can shove it in one box and it fits with the insert that's not perfect, but it does have an insert versus the other one that doesn't. Um, if you have Dinosaur Island, I would tell you to get the totally liquid expansion and then Dinosaur <laughs> World probably if you if you like both. But if I was going to gear you towards one, it would be Dinosaur probably World. go for the new one. Uh, try to find the coins and, if you want. 
I've, and then the upgrade pack so you can have different dinosaurs. If you don't care and you want all uh, T-Rexes, that's fine too. Just put them on. It really doesn't matter. And it's, how much theme do you want in the game? Personally, for me, I do gravitate more, I think, to Dinosaur World. That was going to be my question. Which one would you prefer I, to play? I, I think I prefer to play Dinosaur World, folks, because... <laughs> I, I enjoy this aspect, the creative nature of this aspect of the game. I enjoy the challenge of trying to figure out my path each round and the order of which I need to visit the buildings and even the boredom and knowing that the more and more I visit the same buildings, the, the bigger the penalty there is for that. But I think the biggest <laughs> thing that I enjoy about this over Dinosaur Island is just simply because it's not as heavy about worker placement and there's not as much cutthroat. I, love worker I, love I do like worker placement games, but man, are they I sometimes- love worker placement and worker management. I love worker management. Or meeple really management. Like meeple management, yeah. Uh, Hashtag. But, but the, the- No means no problems. <laughs> meeple management. But the, the cutthroatness, if that's a word, uh, I'm coining that. Uh, that can sometimes that's, come that's with... This is not a word. Check the dictionary. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> that comes with worker placement games can oftentimes just frustrate, frustrate me to no end. Yeah, you get frustrated. I get very that. frustrated about that. And it but can, you get frustrated with dice rolls, too. I do. So. But that's very that's a very minimal aspect yeah, you don't of this do it very game, often. and I and I suck at it. Uh, but I get so frustrated about the cutthroatness that comes with worker placement that sometimes it can just it can it can really take a lot of the enjoyment out of the experience. I like it. This is more of a not a solitaire, but there is so much that is solitary about this aspect There's of so the game. So much that only affects you. Yes, and I uh, versus more interaction and i feel like i think that slowed it down for us a little bit was we were doing we were setting up our board and then going over so we knew what we were doing mm -hmm. and making sure there wasn't any mistakes being done yeah yeah um which i think is good in a game because even because people make accidents and then who knows yeah. where it trails but a lot of it you can do simultaneously right. yeah um which would speed it up a hair um, you threw me on the spot a few videos ago. So what would you rate this? For? Oh goodness. Uh, well, it's a one, two player play, but what would you rate it so far? I think as of today, I think I would probably rate dinosaur world. Uh, I mean, dinosaur Island. I'm going to give dinosaur expansion. world probably an 8.3. I think it's probably where I land on that. Um, which, uh, you know, the number scales can be so subjective, but for me guys, an 8.3 is a game that would sit firmly in my collection. It's not going to leave it anytime soon, if ever. It's going to be one that I will want to get out frequently at game nights. And if anybody were to ask, hey, you've got Dinosaur World, you want to play that? I'm more than likely going to say, yeah, let's get it out. If you have the time. If you have the time. That's the thing. Yeah. So what would you rate Dinosaur Island with? <sighs> Totally liquid expansion. Okay, so that's have that's a, it. that is, and I and I do own Dinosaur Island, folks. I do want to throw that out there. I don't own Dinosaur World. Um, I love Dinosaur Island, and that there is such a nostalgia factor that's tied into it with the upgraded components and everything about that. My my copy that, that I've got some upgrade. Yeah, I got some upgraded components too. Um, I I think I probably. I mean, I have to give it a higher rating, but if I'm just focused on the gameplay, just the gameplay. Uh, the games are more than just gameplay. It, I agree with everything. that. I agree with that. But if I'm the just focused on the gameplay, then I'm probably a, a shade lower and probably we would just say I'm probably like an 8.1. But if I throw in all of the everything else, mm -hmm. right, then that bumps it up for me and it's, and it's I mean, it's in my top 10, Dinosaur Island. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I wasn't prepared to do this. And so one, I, w I would gravitate to play this currently just because I want to play it a few more times. It's new. But, but yeah. So that I can see how it plays with three people, four people, with uh, with different expansions like the Ice Age, yeah. or the water uh, dinosaurs or hybrid dinosaurs. This would be the one I would pull out first right now, but again, uh, I would probably have to put, for me, Dinosaur Island with the expansion, probably around a 8.8, 8.9. 8. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's been maybe even a 9. It's been in my top 5. It's been in my top 10. 
Um, it kind of fluctuates, but it's still very high up there. This one after one play, I will say it's probably uh, in maybe at 8-2, 8-3, but I would really like to play it with three or four because that's what we usually play with mm -hmm. um, to actually see how long it ends up being, <laughs> yeah. uh, how much, <laughs> uh, just how how everything goes. I feel like it, it felt very Dinosaur Island-y, especially moving up the tracks and yeah. last place goes first which you hated but it's the I, same I do, as the original I don't Dinosaur like that Island. rule but i can um, i can tolerate it so a lot of this translates and feels transitions and feels like you're playing a new version of dinosaur island with different mechanics and i think that this is a game that will be in the eights for me mm -hmm. um as a two-player like i said it would be at probably 8.2 um and it may even go up playing with four people um, and, and just add in one, just one expansion pack and see how that changes. Uh, I, I assume minimally, but until I play it, I can I can't speak for that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do still think everybody that both games are eights to nines, depending on uh, what you go with. I don't think there's a wrong choice. Uh, I I think it'll be easier now to upgrade this one, knowing that a lot of the upgrades will be in retail versus having a harder time finding the Dinosaur Island stuff that you don't have unless you find uh, a Kickstarter copy with the coins or go luck out somewhere. I think that this one will be easier if you like upgrades. If you don't care about them, then you can't make a wrong choice. Yeah. They both are great games. They yeah. both play way different. If if you just want to buy both of them and you're blowing money, that's fine too. Like <laughs> I said, you have a spot for them. Play them both. Watch more videos. See if someone has one. Try it and see. There's videos. There's more videos for Dinosaur Island right now, but there's a lot that are coming out and more that are going to come out for Dinosaur World to help you see which gameplay, like Lance said, yeah. would be when you gravitate towards versus... If you just love nostalgia and and you don't and both gameplays fit for you. Yeah. It's it's really like we always tell you, it's up to you to find the game that matches with you. Hopefully some of the things we have said uh, give you a comparison of components from the past to what companies are able to do now for maybe a little bit less money, although shipping for them has gone up. So it, it, it there's really just so much to think about when you're buying them but like i said i don't think there's a wrong choice i think you will would enjoy either game if right. you haven't played either one um it just comes down to taking what we say what other people say and what you think about all of that and making your own uh personal informed decision, decision. yeah mm -hmm. So there you have it, guys. That's our uh, pretty... Oh, slap bracelets. Oh, there you go. For the original. <laughs> Only in the original. You don't get that in Dinosaur World. Um, pretty lengthy video, but we hope that it was informative to you guys. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you gained something from watching that. Please leave us your thoughts, your comments down below. Let us know what you think of either of these <clears> games. Uh, and let us know which one that you are probably more apt to getting and playing uh, in your home. Or so. if there's anything that you would like us to review, maybe we yeah. have it or maybe we can try and get a copy or even compare. I mean, there's not a whole lot that you can compare, you know, very closely. This, our other video for the Dune uh, board games, yeah. very similar that you could, are built off of each other that you can compare. Uh, we have a few others in our heads that we're thinking about. Um, but if you have any suggestions or um, anything you would like to see, please let us know in the comments. Yep. Sure, um, sorry, we don't have room or, or time to put out the custom Dinosaur Island board. Maybe I'll post a picture on my Instagram if you want to just see what that looks like. Um, I don't know if I can find the file or, or where I found the file to make it if you're interested. But feel free to comment down there. Let us know of anything else that maybe you need us to clarify or would like to see in the future. We, we'd appreciate it and we'd appreciate to um, try and get that out there for you if at all possible. 
So there you go. That is Dinosaur World and Dinosaur Island, both from Pandasaurus Games. And I do want to throw out there real quick, we are going to be talking about Dinosaur Roar and Right, the Roll and Right version here in the near future as well. So be on the lookout for that video. And I'm just going to throw it out there. It's very similar to Dinosaur World. I haven't played. So uh, if you if you're like, man, I really like the idea of that Dinosaur World. Wonder if there's a Roll and Right version. There is. Uh, check that out. So uh, there you have it. I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And this has been Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are hard to master. Yeah, a little bit. We'll catch you next time. See ya.